this collection of uh, letters from Countess Markovich tell you quite a bit about her because they're all written from different prisons um, <laughs> over a period <laughs> of a number a of there. years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so she was heavily involved in the 1916 Rising. Uh, she was very much involved in the fight for the vote for women. One of the fascinating things is she's writing these letters to her own sister and while she is in prison, we have one here in December 1918, she becomes the first woman to be elected um, to the British Parliament. She never takes her seat and she does that while she's in prison. So in this 1918 uh, December letter, we have her talking about um, how she got paper, which is a big thing in prison, to write an election address and she was doing it so fast she wasn't sure if it made sense. Uh, well, it must have made a certain amount of sense um, because when we flip over and we see her signature, what she says here as she signs herself, uh, Constance Markovich IRA. Mm -hmm. And then in January, uh, she signs herself Constance Markovich IRA MP. Wow. So she's become a member of parliament in that time. So what we're looking at here are flyers uh, that would have been distributed ahead of the general election on the 14th of December 1918. Mm -hmm. I think very interesting about this one is it wears its heart very definitely on its sleeve. So you've got this big appeal to women at the beginning, <laughs> exclamation mark, exclamation mark. So women over 30 um, who meet certain criteria can now vote. So obviously all candidates are trying to appeal to women. Uh, so this, Hannah, is a unionist candidate, but he is still trying to attract women to his platform. Um, and he's um, identifying some of the reasons why he thinks they should vote for him. Good wages, good food, good working conditions, better houses, better health. All of those things are immediately recognisable to us today as issues that are very live for people in Ireland now. So this flyer is about Countess Markovich and it's an interesting one because it's to a specific audience and from a specific uh, you know, side to, to Markovich's life. When we look at this flyer, um, it's very interesting in the context of, say, Countess Markovich, who is you know, very radical in her mm. politics, um, very revolutionary. What's being pointed to here is her spiritual and her religious side. Um, so what they're showing us is an extract from an Irish priest, is how he's described, um, talking about how religious she was when she was in Kilmainham jail mm -hmm. awaiting trial um, after the 1916 Rising. It was a very particular appeal um, to kind of religion and sacrifice and those really important elements in the memory of 1916. Yeah. So what they're doing is pressing that particular button, which is to remember the kind of religious sacrifice that the men had made, that she was ready to make, mm -hmm. that she was prepared to make it, um, and really kind of emotionally hooking into people that way. What we're looking at here is one of the diaries belonging to a woman called Rosamond Jacob. And Rosamond Jacob is a really fascinating figure from this time. Uh, she was born to a Quaker family in Waterford, uh, so it's great to get the perspective of somebody from outside of Dublin. Mm -hmm. And she was involved in nationalist politics. She helped found the Sinn Féin Club down there in 1906. Um, she was a very strong feminist and a suffragist. And she's writing here about the 14th of December, which is the day of a momentous election that changes the complexion of the Irish Parliament and also is the first day on which women can vote in UK elections. And maybe the details that mightn't have been as fascinating at the time, they seem very everyday. Yeah. Now they're fascinating when you're trying to figure out what did campaigning look like and what did people do. Yeah. So when you look at her entry for the day, um, she says it was a very fine day. Uh, I went down to the club early and got sealing wax etc from Mrs Clancy for the ballot boxes. Okay. So she's talking about those kind of details. And then as she goes through, she's always talking about um, going out and trying to get people out to vote. Mm -hmm. um, so he sa she says, we got a list of women who were to be looked up and I went after them. Some said they had voted, one I brought to the poll, uh, and she had to wait some time to get in as there was a great crowd and all going in and coming out by the same door. Mm -hmm. 